and Tina. We're going to do canvas election counting. Okay. So um, if you can call the canvassing board to order. Okay. And I, uh, since I was on the primary, I have abstained in the last Lisa Reader or County Appraiser to sit in. Okay. And uh, Randy is absent, as we discussed, and so Jan Hummer, the clerk of the district court, has agreed to sit in on the canvas. Okay. Okay, Lisa, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and call then the uh, board of canvassing to order. So the first thing that I have is just a report, and this um, we're going to go through the election um, a little bit. There's one for each of you. And, and did they give you that copy at all? So um, I don't have enough for everyone, but um, we can make more copies if needed. Ashley's. Does anybody want one? Yeah, I just was going to go through. Um, basically, the election went very smooth in Marion County. Um, as you know, we did have new equipment, and so it's just um, taking a little bit of time to learn the equipment on counting the ballots, but it all worked very well. Um, we did have on site support here, which was nice just to have that little uh, security for us. Mm -hmm. um, we did have one uh, ballot marking device that jammed a couple of times over at one of our polling locations, but they had a backup and they were using it and uh, the technician came out and fixed it. So we had no issues with that and no one's <coughs> ballot was affected by that. Um, I've given you our total numbers there. Um, we had 2,302 uh, that voted at the polling place on election day and 35 provisionals, so a total of 2,337 poll site voters. We had um, 235 early in person plus four provisional, and then 121 advanced that we received back by mail and five provisional that we received back. So um, our overall turnout was 34.57%. And I did go ahead and make a sheet for you so you can see that. And then I've given you the breakdown of voters by location. Um, we had a total of 44 provisional ballots, which we will be discussing in a few minutes, and um, you all will make a determination on today. We had, uh, we did have 38 ballots that could not be read by the machine on election night, and those ballots were hand counted by our two resolution boards that were present um, that night, and so those were taken care of. We had um, 107 initially of the advanced ballots that were returned and that were tabulated on election night. We had four additional advanced ballots that were returned to the polling place on election day and then we had 10 additional advanced ballots that were received in the mail. Uh, they were received by Friday, August 10th and all of the ones that we received in the mail did indicate a postmark that was legible, that was, um, that indicated that the ballots had been mailed on or before election day. So they were all legally received. We had no, um, none that were missing postmarks or had any illegible marks. So that was nice for, for us here in Marion County. Uh, once we received those, I did have a sworn advance board that opened and separated the ballots and to make sure that there was uh, the same number of ballots and envelopes. They just went through that same process that we use on election night. And we did tabulate those on Friday. They were included with a second round of um, results reporting along with our hand counted um, ballots that were reported back to the state on Friday afternoon. And those are the totals that we're starting with here today, which I will hand to you in a few minutes. Um, and then this just gives you a little bit about the balancing of the ballots and basically that brings us to the provisionals. So 
Tina, you said that you had an advanced board that did some of the county. Do we know who was on that board? I mean, the public, does the public know who the members of those boards were? Uh, we had two boards that work on election night, mm -hmm. and um, the resolution board and the advanced they board? Were, well, they're both, they both start as advanced boards, and then they transition to duties of resolution boards. Okay. So okay. there are two boards of three people. They're bipartisan boards. Um, I don't have a problem sharing their names. I don't have them in front of me at the moment. Um, but those are the, that's the process. Basically, um, the ballots come in on election night. Mm -hmm. They come in here from the, the poll sites. Mm -hmm. We bring them in. Mm -hmm. They are scanned through the machine that tabulates the votes. Mm -hmm. And then all of them are taken to those advanced and resolution boards, and they can review and, and record the write-ins. And then if there are any marks um, where there is potentially an overvote that cannot be read by the machine because someone marked more than one, if they can determine the voter intent on that, then they do that. So that's their, their process. Would one of your staff be able to look at those names for us? If it's important, we can have it here pretty soon. Yeah, I would like to. Sure. I'm just going to know. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you want to do that before we move on with the results? Well, just as long as we get it before we're, we're done here. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Okay. We have a separate batch for each So you have results here for the federal and state offices together on one sheet. Their county um, commission race is on one sheet. You have your township clerks and then your Democratic and Republican precinct committee results. These results by precinct include election night totals, the write-ins that were tabulated, any hand count ballots, and the um, advanced ballots that were received after election day but were legally um, able to be counted. I have an extra Republican. Okay. So if you want to review through that a little bit um, and just what, while I go get those names for you, yeah, I can do that. That'd mm -hmm. be great. And the next thing that we'll do as, as the board is you will um, we'll talk about the provisionals and the situations that we have here in the county that are provisionals. And here is the chart for that that has the statutes um, on when to count provisionals.
as you can see in uh, my summary, we did have uh, 44 provisional ballots. And um, I had a question earlier about um, people that are, reg that are registered with a party voting across party ballots. And we did have several of those. These are not unaffiliated voters. They're actually voters that are affiliated with the Democratic, Republican, or Libertarian Party, and they requested a ballot of an opposite party. And I have those laid out for you in the report here. So we had uh, four registered Republicans that requested Democratic ballots, three registered Democrats that requested Republican ballots, and two registered Libertarians that both requested Republican ballots. And so those, in a primary election, they would fall into category D4, which I have listed above in, in your... Which you want? I'm on the summary still. Oh, okay. The first one I gave you at the beginning. Oh, okay. I'll, I will keep going through this, this report here. So, okay. Um, and so those, um, according to the statute, should not be counted. Um, we do have a lot of unaffiliated voters in the county, and when they go to the polling location, they are eligible to vote, but they first must affiliate with the party um, of the ballot that they wish to vote. And so we do have a procedure in place. Our poll workers know that they will affiliate, and then they are given the appropriate ballots. And that actually does go on to their voter record, showing that they have made that party affiliation. And then they are eligible to change that back um, to whatever they want, party changes can be made after the state canvas is finalized. And I believe that date is September 4th this year. So, does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. So you said they can change their affiliation up until September 4th? No, after. after they September. cannot change it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if you're registered with a party, mm -hmm. um, the deadline to make that change to either change to a different party or to unaffiliate is June 1st. It's the same as the candidate filing deadline. And so then party changes are closed um, until after the election is over. And the, the exception is really the unaffiliated voters because they are of no party, so they can choose which party they wish to vote. And then once they do that, change, they cannot change back immediately. They have to wait until the, um, the books open for party changes. Okay, so we had, I'm um, still um, on the pages where in the middle it talks about provisional ballot summary. Um, we had two, that's the second, I believe that's the second page, right in the center. Uh, so we had 44 provisionals. We had two that were clerical errors. The voter did register um, in time and it just was not updated with the right date in our system. And so those were clerical errors from, from our office. We had 16 in-county moves. And if you look at your chart, it gives you the situation, and then it gives you the statute, and then it gives you the, the guidance on whether the ballots should be counted or not. And so this would be um, in situation under the letter B, where it talks about moves within the county. And um, these would be um, B4. They registered, they moved within the county, and they voted at either their new precinct or their central location. And as part of the provisional process, they did fill out a new voter registration card. So my recommendation on that, according to the law, is that those 16 would be counted. We had two um, that were under situation C1. So if you look at your chart, the next page, C1, they requested an advanced ballot, but they did not vote the advanced ballot, and then they went and voted at the polling location instead. And so what we do in our office is we verify that we have not received that advanced ballot back, and we did not. And so uh, the recommendation then would be that those two would be counted. Uh, we did have a total of four that uh, were name changes. And you'll find that in um, under letter A and 4. And they had a different name uh, that was on the poll book due to a marriage, divorce, legal proceeding, et cetera. And they did complete their voter application as part of the provisional process. And so those would recommend to count. Uh, then we have a total of 20 that would fall on the other side. So we had um, 
five that were moves from without from outside of the county. And so if you look at situ at under B on the second page. <laughs> This one is out of county. No, excuse me. They ha that has the wrong number on it because the chart was changed yesterday, I believe. This is move out of the county but within the state. So this would be, oh, no, I have the right number, B10 and B11. We had several of both of those. Um, total of five, and either one of those situations are recommended not to count. Then we did have three voters that were not registered. And when they complete their uh, part, they complete their voter application as part of the provisional process, then we will go through the process now of getting them registered before November. Uh, those would recommend not count. And then we had two voters that um, indicated that they had registered at the DMV. We did check those, and we had no record of that, and so that falls at number under number A8, and those are recommended not to count. And then I did have one voter that did not have a valid photo ID and did not present that to me before today, and so um, if they had, if I had gotten it before the canvas, then we could have counted it, but we did not, so that one did not count. So there is a, a total of 20 that would be recommended uh, by the statutes not to count, and 24 to count. Do you have any questions about the provisions? No. Okay. I don't hear you. Okay. So <coughs> the next uh, thing that I would have you do then, if, if um, you don't have any questions about the provisionals, would be to um, take official action as the Board of Canvassers to uh, count the ones that are recommended to count by law. Okay. I'll go ahead and make a motion to count the provisional ballots that are uh, by law able to be counted. Do I have a second? Second. Second? Um, Jan. Jan. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So we'll just take a couple minutes and we're going to open those and we will run them through the standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did they provide proper ID with their name change? I would assume so, but we will verify that when she gets back. So, Tina, there was a question on A4 when it says about a name change to the marriage board or whatever. Surely they check proper identification for the validity yes. of that change, they, have, they right? still have to have the, the photo ID and everything. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is that answer your question? Yes. Thank you.
in the 20 that were not recommended are not in the... No. Yeah. I figured so. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's it. That's okay. It's good yeah. to discuss that. Yeah. Um, those will not be opened. And they are currently in my vault and they'll be sealed into a, um, a bag and um, retained. did zero out the machine. Um, this is my daily totals report and I would like to have you look through it and, and sign it please. So that shows that we're starting with no totals. No totals. These both have overvotes, if you see, on the governor's race. And um, as the Board of Canvassers, um, what I would have you do is determine whether you can uh, look at it and see if you can determine voter intent by those marks. Sometimes you'll see a mark that's filled in and another mark filled in, and then there's an extra one of them. And those are the ones that um, typically you can determine the voter intent. So. Let me just leave these sitting here. Are you ready to look at these? Yes, I will. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. You can do this This one said it was unreadable, and um, so it would probably have to be a hand count. We're going to try to run it one more time.
to archaeology. All right. So what happens on that is no, none of those votes will be counted for that race, but the rest of the ballot has been counted. Okay. Off the tally book so that uh, we can tally those that one ballot at hand, and then we'll go ahead and run reports here, Mercy. So we have the missing reports. So this right here says for the national offices of the United States Representative First District is Nick Reinecker. For for governor and lieutenant governor, you got Jeff Collier for Blue Park. The state office. Yeah, I'll give them a second to find out. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, for Secretary of State, Randy Duncan, Carolina. Attorney General, Derek Smith, State Treasurer, Jake McTurner, Commissioner of Insurance, Clark Schultz, uh, State Representative, 7th District, John E. Barker, Board of Education Member, 7th District. Robert M. Leandro. Township Clerk. Okay, can you tell them what ballot style that is? I forgot how you do that. At the bottom, this is a with a star. Um, there's a word on the Clear left. Creek. Clear Creek. Okay. Okay. And you're at Township? I'm a Township Clerk. Okay, so, so following be sure along the way, I should be nodding. So yes, she is, but they, they need to know what ballot style. Okay. So if you put Clear Creek. That way we can report it properly. So township clerk is Charles W. Savota. And that's all 
collections on this ballot. Do you want to verify that? Oh, you want to do it? Okay. So this is the precinct by precinct report. It's really small. <laughs> um, the next step for us to do um, is to, you can just let that run, Marcy, is we will have someone to read the votes by precincts that were just counted. And then the others that are not reading, um, if you can mark in uh, red or in a pencil or a pen, um, and add the little tally in the correct column of your report. And then that way we come out with it, uh, make sure we have the, the final. And then we'll have to be sure and add in that hand to count the So um, a lot of these are going to have zeros on them. And it, when you look, um, so um, it tells the precinct, it really, it's kind of small print. Mm -hmm. But it's plain, and then it says that there are four pages. This one is all zeros because none of the ballots that we just counted were of that print. Okay. Okay. So um, you can go through until you get to well, with some markings. Some it, yes, and then read the precinct, the race, and the num the name of the person that received um, and how many votes. Okay. And um, you don't have to read if you don't want to. You can designate whoever you would like on there. Okay. And get some board to okay. do that. Okay. You want to do this this time? Um, go ahead. That's a little way for you. Okay. Then I will have. Um, Marcy and Ashley Martin. Well, we're going to start. 
You're going to end up basically going through all of your sheets. Um, the, the rank, I mean, the federal and state offices are first, then the county, then the township, then the Democratic and then Republican precincts. So you're going to, for each precinct, you're going to have to go all the way through with all these sheets. Um, what I typically will do is I just put um, another little mark in the corner. Of and I know those squares are small, but you're going to put it in whatever square. Okay. Okay. Does anybody need rulers? I usually have those out for you. That would be nice. I'm sorry. Well, she's going to give you the ballot style. Um, if you look across the top, fair play mm -hmm. is on all of these sheets. Mm -hmm. And she's going to give you all of the votes from federal all the way down to precinct for, that were cast on fair play. Okay. Okay, the first vote is um, Republican for U.S. Representative First District. Okay. So you're going to find that on your federal state sheet. You're going to be in the fair play column. And then she's going to tell you who you are. One vote for Nick Reinecker. Which one is that for? Nick Reinecker? Yeah. And I'm it's uh, your person. Mm -hmm. It'll be the Republican U.S. Representative. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so that means under fair play. Yes. Okay. What's that? Do we put four or do we put add one? Um, I'm just going to add, I'm just going to put a one. Okay. Um, and we can do them as, uh, and then we'll put the revised total when you sign off. And then we have one vote for Republican, um, Ken Selzer. Secretary of State, uh -huh. Randy Duncan. Mm 
one vote, uh, Attorney General for Derek Schmidt. One vote, Representative State Treasurer, Jake Turner, or L. Turner, sorry, L. Turner, L. Turner. Commissioner of Insurance, um, one vote for Clark Schultz. Um, State Representative, 74th District, one vote for Don Schreiber. You can see where that is. Everybody still together? Member 7th District, one vote for Robert DeAndrea. <coughs> I have a question on this. Hang on, that's not even as strong. We have a Don Schroeder on the Democratic and the Republican. Is that normal? Um, somebody broke his name in on the Democratic ballot, and since he's already, so that's, if you see, there's one vote. Somebody broke that in because there was a blank line on the Democratic ballot in that okay. and race. So they should be the, the one that she called the for the public interest. Yes, correct. Okay. And it should be at the bottom, okay. or you know, the one at the bottom. Okay. Okay, Gail, we have zero votes. And did, you had no votes for anything beyond the, did you have any, any township or precinct votes on that ballot? So, no. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Zero votes for Grant. Zero votes in Lehigh. Okay, uh, Liberty. We have. Because there's it says vote for one, but they marked two votes. I mean, two people. Um, they vote, they, you have two ballots. See, at the top. Oh, so right. you have one vote for two. One for each. Okay. 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 Cool. Sorry. That's okay. That's good to ask. <laughs> no one messed up. Okay. Um, Liberty, uh, U.S. Representative, First District. We have one vote for Roger Marshall and one vote for Nick Reinecker. <clears throat> Under Governor, Lieutenant Governor, we have one vote for Jeff Collier and one vote for Chris Kobach. Secretary of State. We've got two votes for Randy Duncan. Attorney General, we have two votes for Derek Schmidt. State Treasurer, Jake Laterna, we have two votes. Commissioner of Insurance, we have one vote for Clark Schultz 
and one vote for Vicki Schmidt. State Representative, 74th District, we have one vote for Stephen Owens and one vote for Don Schrader. Board of Education, we have two, two votes for Ben Jones. <coughs> County Commissioner, First District, we have one vote for Kent Becker, one vote for Craig Dodd. Did you find your county? It's the single sheet. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you had one for one for Kent Becker. Okay. And one for Craig. Dahl. And they're at the bottom, Diane. Okay. okay. These are Republican votes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for um, precinct committee mm, for Liberty, we have so they two. have no township office. No township, okay. no. Thank you. Yep. So we go to Republican committee here. Okay. We have two votes for Lyndon Beeson. It'll be on page. the third page. <laughs> you said two, two votes? Yes. And for committee woman for Liberty, we have Cleo Beth Friesen, two votes. Zero votes. Lost Springs. Zero votes. Minnow. <coughs> Zero <coughs> votes. Milton. Zero votes. Zero votes. Risley. Zero votes. Summit. Zero votes. West Branch. For U.S. Representative First District, a Republican, we have Two votes for Roger Marshall. We were in the good one. Uh, U.S. Representative. What is that range? Fifth branch. Okay. Yes. And we have one. Yes. Two. 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 Okay. <coughs> um, governor, Lieutenant Governor, we have one vote for Ken Seltzer. One vote for okay. Jeff. I'm trying to find. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> there he is. Okay. One. Okay. Go ahead and so, so. One vote for Jeff Collier. Okay. Just a quick question, just so I'm sure of mm -hmm. her. Where it says total, there's only two votes under that, but it says three. Is that just because there was three ballot? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see vote. one of them is an undervote. That means that they didn't vote for that okay. race. Okay. Okay. Secretary of State. Um, we have one vote for Scott Swab. One for Dennis Taylor. And one for Keith Usaw. Mm -hmm. Attorney General. We have three for Derek Schmidt. For State Treasurer, we have <coughs> three for Jake Letourneau. Commissioner of Insurance, we have three for Clark Schultz.
State Representative, 74th District. We have one for Stephen Owens, two for Don Schrader, Board of Education member. We have two for Robert DeAndrea. We have no vote, no votes for committee and or committee one for West Branch. Okay. Wilson. We have zero votes. Lawrence. We have Lawrence first. We have zero votes. Lawrence second. Zero votes. Hillsborough first. We have two votes. Uh, un uh, U.S. Representative first district. Two votes for Roger Marshall. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, we have one vote for Jeff Collier. And one vote for Chris Kovac. Secretary of State, we have one vote, Dennis Taylor. <coughs> Pardon me. I know this not correct. We have one vote, Randy Duncan. Not, not Dennis. Not Dennis. Pardon me. Okay. And one vote, Keith Usaw. Okay. Attorney General, we have two votes for Derek Schmidt. State Treasurer, we have two votes for Jake Turner. Commissioner of Insurance. Two votes for Clark Schultz. State Representative, 74th District. We have one vote, Stephen Owens. One vote, Don Schrader. Board of Education. We have one vote, Ben Jones. And no votes for DeAndrea. Correct. Total of one vote. Yep. Okay. And County Commissioner First District. We have one vote, Kent Becker. One vote, Craig Dodd. For Precinct Committee Man in Hillsboro, we have two votes for Roger Fleming. Okay. And so that is going to be on your Republican list. Page six. We were in Hillsborough first. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And you said two? Yes. Uh, two votes for Roger Fleming. Okay. Mm -hmm. And precinct committee woman in Hillsborough, two votes for Cynthia Fleming. Fleming or Fleming? I got Fleming. Fleming? F -L -E -M -M. They, say, they pronounce it. They pronounce it. Uh, well, I have two of them. Oh, they're, they're the ones. So here's here's Roger. Yes. He had two. And here's Cynthia. She had two. Okay. 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 Those are what they were. Okay. okay. Hillsborough second. For U.S. Representative, first district, we have one vote, Roger Marshall. Three votes, Nick Reinecker. For Governor, Lieutenant Governor, we have one vote, Ken Silzer. Two votes, Jim Barnett. How many was that for Ken Selsa? I'm sorry. One. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Jim Barnett, we have two. Jeff Collier, we have one. Secretary of State, we have one vote, Scott Schwab. One vote, <coughs> Keith Fusaw. Attorney General, four votes, Derek Schmidt. State Treasurer, four votes, Jake Turner. Commissioner of Insurance, two votes, Clark Schultz. Two votes, Vicki Schmidt. State Representative, 74th District, four votes, John, Tr John Troder. Board of Education, one vote, Robert DeAndrea, two votes, Ben Jones, County Commissioner, First District, one vote, Kent Becker, three votes, Craig Dodd. Sorry, one Kent Becker, one Kent Becker, three for Craig Dodd. Okay, we'll move on from five. Nine, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight. One for Becker, and how many for Dodd? Um, three. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Representative Precinct Kit Committee Woman for Hillsborough Second. Mm -hmm. Or Committee Man, yes. Is That's page six again. And we're on committee. Committee ma'am, president. Um, I'll for a second. Okay. And it's Clinton Seibel. And then five votes. And then precinct committee woman for Hillsborough. Dolores Dalkey. Five votes. U.S. Representative, with three votes for Roger Marshall, one vote, Nick Reinecker, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, one vote for Ken Seltzer, two votes for Jeff Collier, one vote for Chris Kobach. Secretary of State. One vote for Craig McCullough. One vote, Scott Schwab. One vote, Dennis Taylor. One vote, Keith Usaw. Attorney General, four votes for Derek Schmidt. State Treasurer, four votes, Jake Laterna. Commissioner of Insurance, four votes, Vicki Schmidt. State Representative, 70th District, John Barker, four votes. Board of Education, Robert DeAndrea, two votes. Ben Jones, two votes. Did everybody, Did everybody find John Barker? He's close to the top. I don't know. Yes. Okay, and then the, the school is clear down at the bottom. Yes. 
John. Okay, how many did Robert? Um, Robert had two votes. Okay, and Ben had two votes. Okay. And then Representative Precinct Committeeman for Marion Moore. if I mispronounce the last name. Four votes for Jerry Mac Macavac. Did you say four? Four. Yes. And precinct committee woman for Marion North. Oh, no, zero. We don't have one. Sorry. Marion South, um, Democratic U.S. Representative, 1st District. We have one vote for Alan LaPolice. Uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, we have one vote, Joshua Spotty. Secretary of State. One vote for Brian McClendon. Attorney General, one vote for Sarah Swain. State Treasurer, one vote for Marcy Francisco. Commissioner of Insurance, one vote for Nathaniel McLaughlin. Um, State Representative, 70th District, one vote for Joe Schwartz. Board of Education, one vote, James Hannon. Democratic um, Committee Woman Precinct, Marion South. Okay, so now you need your Democratic list. And Marion South is on page three. One vote for Ann Carr. Take that page four. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that was for who? On Ann Carr. And because, yeah, committee woman. Okay. He didn't do a committee man yet. There was not. <coughs> okay. For U.S. States Representative First District. So we're on. Going back over on the Republican. So still on Marion South, then on Republicans. And you're on your page one. Go back to the beginning. Did you find your, your Democratic vote to put on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we just go back to the beginning of the list again. Okay, okay. one uh, U.S. Represent State Representative, Roger Marshall, one vote. And which district are we in? We are in Marion South. Okay. It does all the Democratic votes. should have been on the Republicans. Right. Right. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, we have two votes, Chris Kobach. Secretary of State, one vote, Craig McAuliffe, one vote, Scott Schwab. Attorney General, two votes, Derek Schmidt. State Treasurer, one vote, Jay Coterna. Commissioner of Insurance, one vote, Clark Schultz. One, Vicki Schmidt. <coughs> State Representative, 70th District, one vote, John Barker. Board of Education member, one vote, Robert DeAndrea. Republican Precinct Committee man here himself, two votes. Page seven. 
Two votes. What was your name? I'm sorry. Bob Brookins. Okay. Two votes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And two votes for uh, Precinct Committee Woman, um, Anita Brookins. East. Democrat, we'll start with U.S. Representative Alan Lovelace, one vote. Governor, Lieutenant Governor Laura Kelly, one vote. Secretary of State Brian McClendon, one vote. Attorney General, one vote for Sarah Swain. State Treasurer, one vote, Marcy Francisco. Commissioner of Insurance, one vote, Nathaniel McLaughlin. Board of Education member, James Hannon, one vote. Did you that one? Mm -hmm. I did the Board of Education yes. one, James Hannon. Mm -hmm. And that is all for Peabody East. Peabody West, Democratic and um, U.S. State Representative, with two votes, for Alan Lockleys, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, one vote, Laura Kelly, Secretary of State, Brian McClendon, one vote. Attorney General Sarah Swain, two votes. State Treasurer Marcy Francisco, two votes. Commissioner of Insurance Nathaniel McLaughlin, two votes. Board of Education James Hannon, two votes. report to run from. I'm going to read back through it and just verify your marks um, since we didn't have two copies with someone else verifying their reading. And then we also, um, do you have any tally books for the hand counts? Let's go ahead. I, I was just going to have you just glance at them to make sure they look to be okay. exactly right. the same. Sheets. Do you need red? You have to do it right. 
Okay. So we'll just add those hand counted uh, numbers in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Republican U.S. Representative First District. You need to tell the ballot style. Is it, a, is it listed in the right to the side? Original? Oh, no. I failed to get to the county board of restriction. <laughs> She's going to, it's the U.S. representative. Okay. 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 Nick Reiniger, one. Um, Republican Governor, Lieutenant Governor Jeff Collier, one. Republican Secretary of State, so Randy Duncan, one. Republican Attorney General, Derek Schmidt, one. Republican State Treasurer, Jake LaTurner, one. Republican Commissioner of Insurance, Clark Schultz, one. Republican Kansas Representative, 70th District, John Parker, one. Republican Board of Education, 7th District, Robert M. DeAndrea, one. Um, Clear Creek, this is what we're doing. Republican Township Clerk. Okay, so we need to go to our Township Clerk pages. So you need this set. It says Township. Okay. Okay, and we're in Clear Creek. We're in Clear Creek. Clear Creek. Okay. And if you go all the way down where it says Clear Creek Republican, it's towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, Charles Voboda, one. okay with reading back through this and verifying your marks or do we want to just verify marks in the office? That's from the hand count that we did. That's not from that one. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's a different color. Gotcha. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, thanks for checking. Okay, zero in Durham Park. 
Nothing in East Branch. And we do have a, uh, we have one ballot in Fair Play, Republican. I have uh, one vote in Fair Play for Nick Reniger. One vote in Fair Play for Ken Seltzer. Uh, for Secretary of State, Randy Duncan, one. For Attorney General, Derek Schmidt, one. State Treasurer, Jake LaTurner, one. Commissioner of Insurance, Clark Schultz, one. State Rep, 74th District. I have Don Schrader, one. And Board of Education, um, DeAndrea, one. No ballots in Dale. No ballots in Grant. No ballots in Lehigh. We have two ballots in Liberty. Both Republicans. And for U.S. Representative. First district, I have one for Roger Marshall and one for Nick Reiniker. For governor, we have one for Jeff Collier and one for Chris Kobach. For secretary of state, we have two for Randy Duncan. Attorney general, two for Schmidt. Treasurer, two for LaTurner. Mm -hmm. Your second for the Secretary of State sure. is Randy Duncan. Yes, two. Okay. Okay. okay, and then we have uh, two for Derek Schmidt for Attorney General, two for State Treasurer Jake LaTurner. Oh, we are, oh, we're in Liberty. We're in Liberty. Okay, yeah, okay, my law. Okay, so go ahead. That's okay. That's why we're verifying it. Uh, Commissioner of Insurance, I have one vote each for Clark Schultz and Vicki Schmidt. State Representative, 74th District. So we are on 74th District, um, State Rep. Stephen Owens, one. Don Schrader, one. And State Board of Education, Ben Jones, had two. Okay. And then if you go to your county sheet, County Commissioner, First District. Kent Becker, one. Craig Dodd, one. And then if you go to your uh, precinct committee for Republican. For precinct committee man for Liberty. And I have two for Lyndon Thiessen. Okay. And then for precinct committee woman, I have two for Cleo Beth Friesen. No ballots cast in Logan. No ballots cast in Los Springs. No ballots in Minnow. Or Melton. Or Moore. Nothing in Wilson. Summit. And we did have three ballots in West Branch and the Republicans. So for U.S. Representative, uh, First District, we have two for Roger Marshall and zero for Ryan Hood. For Governor, Lieutenant Governor, one for Kent Seltzer, one for Jeff Collier. No other votes. 
Repres uh, for governor, I mean. Rep Secretary of State, Scott Schwab, one. Dennis Taylor, one. Keith Esau, one. For Derek Schmidt, for Attorney General, three. Jake LeTurner, three. Commissioner of Insurance, Clark Schultz, three. State Representative, 74th District, Stephen Owens, one. Don Schrader, two. And for State Board of Education, two votes for DeAndrea and zero for Jill. No other votes. None in Wilson. None in Florence first. None in Florence second. We do have two ballots cast in Hillsborough first. Both Republicans. U.S. Representative, two for Roger Marshall. Governor, we have one for Jeff Collier, one for Chris Kobach. Secretary of State, one Randy Duncan, one Keith Esau. Attorney General, two for Derek Schmidt. State Treasurer, two for Emma Turner. Commissioner of Insurance, we have two for Schultz. State Representative, 74th District, we had one for Owens and one for Schrader. State Board of Education, one for Jones. And if you go to the county page, county commissioner, first district. Uh, we had one for Becker, one for Dodd. And then if you go to your um, Republican <coughs> committee, precinct committee for Hillsborough first, committee man. We had two for Roger Fleming. And for Committee Woman, we had two for Cynthia Fleming. Hillsboro second. We had five ballots cast. Okay, U.S. Representative, First District. We have one for Roger Marshall. Three for Reinecker. For Governor, we have one for Seltzer, two for Barnett, one for Collier. For Secretary of State, one for Scott Schwab, one for Keith Esau. For Attorney General, four for Derek Schmidt, four for La Turner, for Treasurer. Commissioner of Insurance, we had two for Schultz, two for Schmidt. State Representative, 74th District, Don Schrader, four. State Board of Education, DeAndrea, one. Jones, two. And then to your county base. We have one for Becker. Three for Dodd. And then on your precinct committee for Republicans, for Hillsborough second. Committee man. We had five for Clinton Seibel. And for committee woman, five for Dolores Dalkey. Marion North, four ballots, Republican. <coughs> for U.S. Rep, we have three for Marshall, one for Reinecker. For Governor, one for Seltzer, two for Collier, one co op. <coughs> Secretary of State, McCullough, one. Schwab, one. Taylor, one. Esau, one. Attorney General Schmidt, four. Treasurer McTurner, four. 
Commissioner of Insurance, Schmidt for U.S. Or excuse me, State Rep. 70th District, Barker for State Board of Education, DeAndrea two, Jones two. And if you go to your Republican Precinct Committee for Marion North. Jerry Makovec, four. Okay. Marion South, we have uh, three ballots total, one Democratic, two Republican. Uh, U.S. Rep for uh, Democratic, Alan LaPolice, one. For Governor. Josh Spady, one. For Secretary of State, McClendon, one. Attorney General, Swain, one. Trip. Okay, that's okay. Swain, okay. You see Swain? I do. Okay. Um, Treasurer, Francisco, one. Commissioner of Insurance, McLaughlin, one. State Representative, 70th District, Schwartz, one. Anyway, toward the bottom, Board of Ed, James Hannon, one. And if you go to your Democratic Precinct Committee list, and go to Marion South. vote for Ann Carr. And then all the way back to the beginning, we're still in Marion South, and now we're going to do the Republican. Roger Marshall, one. For Governor, we have two for Kobach. Secretary of State, Nicola, one. Schwab, one. Attorney General, Schmidt, two. State Treasurer, LaTurner, one. Commissioner of Insurance, Schultz, one. Schmidt, one. State Rep, 70th District, Barker, one. State Board of Ed, DeAndrea, one. And your Republican Precinct Committee list. Marion South. <coughs> we have two for Bob Perkins. And then for Precinct Committee Woman, two for Anita Perkins. Okay, and then we go to Peabody East. We had one Democratic ballot cast. Alan LaPolice, one. For Governor, Laura Kelly, one. Secretary of State, McClendon, one. Attorney General, Swain, one. Treasurer, Francisco, one. Commissioner of Insurance, McLaughlin, one. Board of Education, James Hannon, Hannon, excuse me, one. And then back to the top for the Repu oh, there are no Republican votes. That's all for seats. Peabody West. Two ballots cast. Both Democratic. So we have for U.S. Rep, La Police, two. For Governor, Kelly, one. No other votes for Governor. <coughs> Secretary of State, McClendon, one. Attorney General, Swain, two. Treasurer, Francisco, two. Commissioner of Insurance, McLaughlin, two. State Board of Ed, <coughs> Hannon, two. 
Treasurer, one for Turner. Commissioner of Insurance, one for Clerk Schultz. The, um, 70th District, Kansas House. Barker, one. State Board of Education, DeAndrea, one. And then on your clear on your township list. It should say Office of Township Clerk, okay, Clare okay. Creek, okay. on Office of Township Clerk. Um, so I think it's at the very back of, the end of your staff. Okay. It's under your county. There you go. Clare Creek. We had one for Charles Savota. And that is it. Okay. Everything confirmed? Mm -hmm. Is it okay if we do a um, short recess to update the results and bring them back for certification for mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Tom. Tom, we're going to start. Yes, and I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Okay. So she just handed us back the ones that we wrote on, tallied on, and now perhaps I want to. No, that's it. Uh, this is with those tally marks added in. So if you guys would be willing to take a look at your sets and it kind of pass these around to make sure that we have added correctly. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, and I will give you these. These are the good ones. We tried to print them in that color for you to differentiate. Okay, so now we're going to actually pound them up. There was, do you have the one with the circle? Do you have a question for Tina on one of the ballot uh, counts? Is Tina coming? Yes. Tina coming? Okay, this one might be. And I think one of them was right on the front of several offices, wasn't it? Yeah. So you have yours? I think there was more than three copies, so Tina's moving the back there, so. However, the marks are here on third grade, there's one line, so it is on here. And if you I have it here, you can see the back. Circle. So here's the other one. So now we have four. And, so there's, and, and I don't see the one that's circled. No. Right back here, ask a question, yes. um, and we don't have the, the the one where we had the circle that she had asked you about. <coughs> it was just your copy. Of it was your copy. Oh, you, you don't have that. Okay. Uh, but that lady back there had a question about okay. one count. Tina, I just wanted to yes. know how this ballot for Fair Creek. I guess that's a how it was counted. It wasn't in this count here. No, it was. It was. We did that separately. We did it separately. When you reported Care Creek, you uh -huh. said zero. This See, we have, but we did tallies for Clear Creek. Okay. Um, so actually, this should be one for Clear Creek. Yes, because that was just what was on the report that I was reading, which okay. was the report from the machine. But remember, we had that hand counted one, and we had that separate tally book for that. Okay. So on my report that I was reading at that time, there were none for Clear Creek, but we did actually have. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, you're welcome. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Everybody yeah. in? Okay. I'm supposed to add it up to make sure that they come to these totals. 
I said you have two. Yeah, two. Right. This one yes. isn't marked completely, so ah. if you have one that's complete, then it'll be perfect. Thank you. <laughs> on um, some special paper to put in our binder, but in the interest, that takes a little bit of time to print that out properly, so because it's front and back, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure I don't misprint. So if you are comfortable that these results are the ones that you certified or that you've canvassed, I would like you to all sign off on this copy, and then when I have the official ones printed, I can bring them around and have you sign those if that's okay. Later today, 
Okay, so if you would all just um, sign the back of these and then we'll um, just sign the, paper, the other one later. Does anybody have any other questions? Unless you have anything else, then we're ready to adjourn the candles so we don't have to do that question. Okay, anybody have anything else? Anybody have any other questions? Totals? Um, you want to report all the totals? I can read them all off at the end. That'd be fine. Okay, <laughs> sure. Is that okay? Go right ahead. All right. We're I'm sorry. Just, right? Pardon me? We're talking new totals. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, on, on federal and state. For Democratic, La Police, 342. Marshall, 1612. Reiniger, 515. For Governor, Roger, uh, excuse me, Laura Kelly, 200. Savady, 75. Anderson, 11. Bergeson, 8. Brewer, 118. Kusera, 8. Ruzik, 6. Seltzer, 366. Tutera, 4. Barnett, 246. Collier, 867. Kobach, 723. For Secretary of State, McClendon, 359. McCullough, 204. Schwab, 669, Taylor, 243, Duncan, 613, Esau, 262, Attorney General, Swain, 369, Schmidt, 1981, Treasure, Francisco, 371, Laturner, 1896, Commissioner of Insurance, McLaughlin, 358. Schultz, 1,221. Schmidt, 897. Kansas House, District 70. Schwartz, 166. Barker, 707. 74th District. Owens, 751. Schrader, 626. Board of Education, Hannon, 353. DeAndrea, 1052. Jones, 796. County Commissioner, 1st District, Becker, 473, Dodd, 202, Cushenberry, 228. How far do you want the township clerk and the um, committee people as well? I don't mind reading those out if people want them. Does anybody want them? 
Okay. No. Okay. No. All right. I would like to verify just a couple of things that um, we had it as far as the gubernatorial the additional ones because I wasn't sure when you quit counting the initial provisionals and then you went back by township or precinct. So okay. we're counting like additional eight for Collier, an additional five for Kobach. That's what I'm wondering about. Okay. Um, verify that. Can you give me those lists again, Mark? Sorry about this. That's okay. I just want to make sure that we're Shout out on. verifying yeah, that. Have it. I know Sean will appreciate it too. <laughs> we have to report back. So for a call year, it was 860, and we are at 867, so is it an additional 7? And Kobach was at 718, so we have an additional 5 for 723. Okay. Any other questions? Total rejected were 22, right? Because of the two undiscernibles. Is that what you would say? Well, there were 20 initially. Do um, 20 that were not recommended. We counted, we counted all those ballots. It's just that on the ballot that was undiscernible on the race, race for governor, the votes for governor were not counted because it was impossible to determine the voter. Okay. Okay. Everything else was counted. So for that, ballots. so for the gubernatorial race, I could say 22 were. Well, we tried to count them. Exactly. So I wouldn't say we rejected them. <clears throat> all right. I would just say that. All right, that's a different category. Yes, so it is. Absolutely. I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. So I'll make my numbers tie up. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great job, Tim. Thank you so much for being so precise. Oh, uh, well, I want to do my best on that. Yes. <laughs> this is you important. Is so. Okay. Is it okay to take these Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to. Yes, sir. Well, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to go ahead and end the 2018 election canvassing for Marion County. Do I have a second? Second? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you so much for serving on the canvassing board. I'm sorry it took a little longer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Turn my onion to Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order of the Marion County Commission for <coughs> August 13th. And administrative is first. Okay. Can you give me a minute? We still need to get an organization. I think I'm good. Unless you want to skip me and come back if you have other people waiting. Um, I'm okay either way. Are you going to go ahead? Okay. All day I can hold any money Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay. Shooting at you yeah. with the there. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So for administrative, <coughs> I have the minutes of July 31st. <coughs> Okay, got the minutes of July 31st. I have a motion on the minutes of July 31st. I'll make a motion to approve the July 31st minutes. You made the motion to accept them? If yes. Okay. I'll go ahead and second it. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion okay. carries. Yeah. 
Thank you. Then I have the minutes of August 3rd. And I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of August 3rd as written. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 early checks. Right here is for recycling and roll-off containers. Fire disposals. The amount of $460.72. Okay. Yeah, and we also have for the transfer station trailer the purchase of fifty six thousand dollars and six seventy four eighty. And we have Lloyd Davies and APP IT service. Um, So this doesn't usually come through like this, so this is a little different. Uh, that one is just, um, it was an invoice, actually two invoices that the departments didn't get turned in. Um, okay. And they, apparently they've been holding them a while, so we just went ahead to get him paid. Okay. Programming from TBS Electronics for $9,600. Isn't that additional work on the. That is the, the additional programming to get it the way the fire districts wanted it. Um, okay. Just the fire districts or all the people that wanted it programmed differently? Because I know some of the. You know, People, some of the volunteer EMS like theirs. I think it's all taken care all of. It's all included. Yeah, I don't think there are any other invoices, so I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> okay, so, and then we also have obligation bonds of $2,600. Yeah. Your turn. Packets, you do have budget reports and department revenue reports. So as I read this, Kirk and Michael bill, correct me if I'm wrong, um, they're, we're asking for the bill that they're presenting now is for $79,818. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I just um, put this in for your information. Um, we've got it entered, but it's the um, total bill to date is this 262 so you that's where you are. Okay. Um, I was just going to follow up with you on that because you were kind of wondering how much we had spent. Yeah, I was. I, okay. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, you had a little letter in your packet from the Pine Edge Golf Course just as a thank you for the road work over there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to decide this today, but Deidre was um, still wanting to know um, the flu shots whether you want to do that for the employees again this year and or employee families. And I, I don't care if you decide today, but she's going to want to know sometime. 
We did last year. We did just employees, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the past you have done employees and families. And of course, I would have no problem doing it with the employees again this year. So do we, are we, do I tell her that we're going to do it or do you want to decide? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. If, if you're ready. I'll make a motion to go ahead and pay for the employees. And I'll second that. Okay. We'll pay for the food shop for the employees only. Okay. Um, on the motion? Yes. Okay. One thing to say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, and I just have uh, a few salary sheets. <clears throat> so we have here Melinda. What, uh, when? Weans. Uh, Weans? When? Is it Weans? I think so. Okay, Weans. Uh, she's a new RN for school hearing and vision screening at $25 an hour. Hired at the health department, of course. And then we have um, Lisa Reader. She is getting a one year raise of the county appraiser from $48.25 to 49 months. We also have uh, Michelle Klinda, one year raise of appraisal number one. She is going from $1,914 a month to $1,952 a month. And finally, oops, finally, second to last, we have got uh, Jessica Snyder, who is a uh, one-year raise as a 9-11 system operator from $14.62 an hour to $14.90 an hour. <clears throat> and now, finally, we have Noah Richter. Richter. Uh, he's going from $12 to $12. It's just a probably changing location. Yeah, changing from the sheriff to ambulance, EMT. No pay, no change in pay. So well, That's just stop. administrative so that we can put him in the okay. right category. So we have a new equipment operator number one for $2,267 a month. Is he local or did he? Peabody. Peabody. No, Culver Crew. Or just a new equipment operator. Yeah. And then also we have uh, a one-year raise for a bridging culvert supervisor, James Olson, who goes from $3,472 a month to $3,539 a month. And this is his one-year pay raise. Yes.
Wow. I'm going to sit here so I can explain that. Okay. Uh, what we have here is a map of uh, center high school bus routes. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Mueller got in contact with me last week. And on your map above Lost Springs, you'll see an area where I use red ink mm -hmm. and yellow. Uh, where that star is and you see the highlighted yellow, uh, that half mile needs to be rocked. Well, he's asking if we could rock it for a school bus route. Um, he... Who is the person? I'm sorry. Bob Mueller. He's in charge of the transportation uh, okay. for the bus routes okay. for Center High School. Okay. <clears throat> Above the star here is 360th running across here. Okay. So if you drop down two, month, two miles, he said he has to go on 340th up here to Remington and get to this star to pick this person up. Then he'd have to drop back down and get this person at the yellow dot back up and get, because it is rocked on the north side of this star right here. Um, so he was going to drop down, come back up, and then go back around because he says he has to come in on 340th to pick up this group of Lost Springs people, and he has to come from the west. He cannot come from the east. Coast. There's, I guess, no place, good place to turn around at. Um, and it's uh, dangerous for kids uh, walking across or some, the street or something uh, there. So he has requested that we, if we could look into rocking this. Um, it's about four tenths of a mile, almost a half a uh, mile. There was at one time a home right here in this mile, just south of that. Uh, there's no mailbox there anymore. It's that farm place is uh, vacated. Um, so that that mile used to be rock, so we would have to touch this up with a little bit of rock as well. So really there's one and a half miles. 1.6 miles total that or 1.4 miles total that we'd have to rock but the main part is this is the dirt road part um, beginning of this year the dirt <coughs> not knowing it but the dirt work actually got done on this road we actually have uh, drainage ditches crown to the road so it wouldn't be a whole lot of stuff to go put some base rock down at this time mm -hmm. if you chose to do it um, the reason I'm bringing it to your attention is every time a school bus route wants to add a more gravel to a road or something or to a, make a dirt road into a gravel road, I need to come talk with the commission. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a decision that has to be done today, but <clears throat> uh, something to think about. Um, and if you wanted to, that's great. Uh, I don't think, I told him that I, do, I doubt I'm going to be able to get it done before the school year starts. So. He, he understood that since it was just a request from last week, so. So he actually makes all that out of the way trip to go pick up that, the students there. Yes. At that home. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess the state is on a lot of these schools of trying to save how the bus drivers can start saving mileage. I'm, I'm starting to hear a lot more from other school districts that the state's really on them by trying to save miles of not burning so much fuel. But mm -hmm. So, I, <clears throat> if this makes it easier for them, then I, you know, I guess that's why it's left out to be three. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's easier on the kids too if they don't have to ride the bus for such a long period of time making all this ridiculous circling around. Mm -hmm. So. That will up a little bit on maintenance though going forward too. Yeah, the nice thing is, is we've got it all prepped pretty much. I mean, not knowing that this was going to happen and we did some some work on that road already, that's kind of nice to know too. So we could go in there right now with minimal work <coughs> and get some drop laid out for them too. So. Is that going to affect any of your other rocking plans going forward? Not with that stretch. I mean, the only thing is is adding that other mile in there that we were not rocking anymore since there's no longer a mailbox <coughs> um, but there's signs that it used to be rock anyways you know there's a little bit of rock left on it so 
Well, I have no problem locking that. Um, do you have any problem moving forward with it? No. We need to work with the districts. So I'll go ahead then and make a motion to accept the mile and a half, it looks like, of locking. Uh, yes, upland it? between 360 to 340. Okay. Upland between 360s and 340s for intended school route. Yes. Okay. Do yes. I have a second? Do you have a question? That's nothing that's going to get touched by the wind farm in any way. You know, okay. I'll second. <coughs> okay, got a motion and a second. I'll say aye. 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 I don't want that, I don't keep it all. Oh, yeah. Mm. Just because I love stacks of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, that's the department of business I have for right now. Okay. Uh, Jesse, I do have some questions for you, though. Yeah. Okay, if you don't mind. So, uh, did you know, um, did you uh, talk to uh, Darren? Did he go do the testing on 330th yet? Uh, that, no. He, I, not that I'm aware. He said he'd call me once he did. Uh, I don't know. If, just you know? aware of it. I don't know. Do you know about 330th? Your There's road, uh, Roxbury Road. Roxbury Road. There is cracking that is developing on that asphalt. Uh, I just found out. What day did I call you? Thursday or Friday? Something like that. I yeah. found out that day. This um, is the, the cracks on that road. Um, and this is just. Is I just. This is just a few that I. Is that toward the west end? There's quite a bit of it on the from the yeah. county line in for two miles. Actually, it's kind of throughout the road. Correct. Yeah. I think. And then there's more. There's other places, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and see, this is kind of, and this is a bad picture, but it's the best I could do with my little camera, but you can see how it's cracking. Mm -hmm. This is right down the middle of the lane. Now, I called, I went and looked at it right away. Uh, called there, the engineer with EBH. Um, he was going to get up there and look at it. I tried to explain the cracks to him. Um, he said it's good that I called because we're still within a year. If there is, if they determine it's a base issue, um, Burkamp is still within the first year. So that they would have to go in and, re and rework the base and, and asphalt. How they determine that, I don't exactly know. He says he has something in his office that can help determine issues like that. If it's just asphalt separating, then there isn't going to be much that's going to happen as far as except us having to go in and crack seal this fall. What's your gut feeling on it, though, just by what's happening? Well, I mean, how could that be? A, I mean, I'm just asking. When, you when you got your roadway like this, and then I, someone called me and told me there's cracking on the road, so I was the roadways. Is, I was hoping to see cracking going across the road. Uh, that's usually a good sign of asphalt separating. You see it on a lot of roads. When you have them running with the road, a lot of times it <coughs> it can indicate a subgrade issue, meaning a base issue. And I I asked Darren that I, I asked him exactly what I just commented to you, and he goes, "Well, that's why I'm surprised you're telling me this because I was hoping you said they were going across the road because that's normal. Going with the road, it's that's to me, it's not good." Uh, usually it indicates uh, subgrade issues. So he he wasn't too happy when I told him. I wasn't happy to see what we found out. So I need to get a hold of him today or tomorrow and find out what's going on there. And he said he would get a hold of me when he was done, but I haven't heard from him. So, so if we're talking subgrade, it's bird camp's problem if it's a distant as long as we're the same year. Part. So we got until you know we got a few months yet. So. I'm, I'm hoping it's not, but at the same time, <laughs> better now than yes. six months from now. Correct. So. I do think it's brought to the attention. Yes, right? I def, some people didn't want to tell me. I have to know that stuff. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I have to know so I can get <laughs> the right phone calls made. So. Um, but yeah, that's uh, I haven't really passed that on yet to you, Ken, either. So. Chester, did you say the last two miles? For sure, the last two miles from the county line in going okay, east, and then there's Eagle. also Eagle. There's a really it's bad a one at one. Eagle, um, and a few others. And there's also if you just driving it, you're not going to see them. If you get out and walk it like I did, there's a whole bunch of hairline cracks developing. So 
I don't have an answer for any. Okay. Let's see what comes Okay, so then, oh, I'm sorry, Kennedy. Go ahead. So then the next thing I want to bring to your attention was um, on 330th again, uh, but this time going east. On 15? Yes, in okay. fact, of Limestone, the yeah. one that the crew has just been working oh, on out there. Oh, um, Yeah, the one yeah. Where, where the crew has been for, I don't know what it's been about a month, but they've been out there doing blade patching and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they were doing blade patching out there, and it's, it's interesting to me, Jesse, uh, the blade patching that they're doing out there is already breaking up like this. See, then this is at several places. Now, this is interesting because this is just not even a month. And this is three different locations to where, and this is just some of the really big stuff. I didn't bother taking pictures of all the various cracks. Yes. And then this is a picture right here of a spot to where you can very easily see what they did the blade patch, but they did not blade patch this, but just left that, which I don't understand. Uh, and and it, some, it could have even gotten worse right after the uh, blade patching. Um, this heat, the, the truck's on it, it's blown out. Like I said, there's no there's no base under it. I keep chasing her, we keep chasing ourselves. Um, I finally just had to, we just had to keep moving on. Uh, whether it was, I don't know if it was there while we were blade well, patching. Well, no, this, I just. <clears throat> it's, you know, sometimes when we were even there, it was breaking up right underneath our tires of our dump trucks. It's just. There's so many soft spots out there. Um, the whole road is the base issue. It's just it's a problem. I can't keep up with it. And as I reported before, you know, a lot of the stuff we're doing this year is if there is any good parts of the road, I am sealing them up, but we just keep it. We're going to have blowouts right away. It's, we're chasing our tail on that thing. You, you plan on chip seal on that? Yeah. Is that going to be, should we actually consider doing that? Well, like I said, right now what I have going on right in front of our chip seal is um, hand patching going on. So when we run into big cases like these, we're throwing some whole bunch of hand patching down and trying to get it stick. It's not going to last long. I'm just trying to, you know, I, I advised everyone a few weeks ago in this room that some, it's, it's frustrating because some of the stuff we're doing this year is going to blow out right away. Um, so I guess my question is, though, I know it's, you said it's on schedule for chip and seal, and you knew it was, <coughs> but knowing that it's not going to last, is it wise to proceed with the chip and seal process? I mean, should we rethink this? Well, the, the problem is there, I mean, there are a few good spots on the road. I mean, we're in that direction, all my material's up there. If I can preserve anything that is good from that road right now is my whole key behind it. Um, you know, I'm just trying to say whatever's good right now because it's been so long since we've had a chip seal on it. Um, that's, if you want me to stop what I'm doing, I'll... Well, no, I'm, I'm asking you. Well, I mean, I, I feel it's... Like I said, it's frustrating because I know when we go on the chip seal, we're going to blow us right away. People are going, what the heck? Um, and there was a waste of material. But as far as the rest of the road, where there is good spots, it wasn't a waste because I know we're sealing up cracks and whatnot, and I gotta save what's there at least so that way I can keep moving on to some other roads. Um, you're not gonna be frustrating. You're not gonna be chip sealing it here next week, right? Yeah, we could be. We just started Friday. We're already past. We're past Lost Springs this morning, and um, mm -hmm. we're gonna do, we're gonna do the Ramona area. So by the end of this week or beginning of the next, we'll already be on this road. <clears throat> wow. Roads like that, it appears we need to determine whether that, if we're wasting that much money, if it shouldn't be, just be gravel again. Because <laughs> there's no base. Well, I, I think too we need to at least rethink it before we keep throwing money at it. I mean, knowing that it's going to break up and this is, like I said, less than a, a month, or mm -hmm. right at a month, and this is what we got. Yeah. And the bad part about it, you know, the good part about it is the people see it. Mm -hmm. And the people are not happy, and, and who would, you know, yeah. you're not happy, I'm, I'm not, not happy. happy, nobody's happy. But I'm just thinking what we're doing is not working. So I'm just wondering if we should maybe, and I'm not giving you any solutions, I'm just saying, 
somebody, somehow, maybe we can rethink what we need to do. Because I don't know how we can keep doing it every month or every year. I don't either. I don't know how we can go on like that. No, I mean, the, the, next, the next step is, is grinding it back down and turning it to gravel until, until we get a new base in there and until we can get it back to asphalt again. You know, that's the next step is trying to get a new base in there again. But that's wouldn't, grinding. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it make more sense? And I, I know, the, you know, the folks that live out there would rather have an oil road. There's no doubt about oh, that. Correct. But if they're fighting potholes all the time, would it, wouldn't it be better to just grind it up and try to try to build a base? You know, well, that's I know that takes a period of time to do that. Yeah. Correct. I mean, that's you know something we need to discuss is, is considering turning some of these roads to to uh, gravel again until we find the time and money. And the last thing we need is residents like uh, the Roxbury Road residents. Um, Everyone along there had to deal with all these potholes and rock patches and the safety concerns of it. it you know, it just, yeah. it was crazy. And that's the way some of these roads are heading to. Uh, a lot more of these roads are heading yeah. that direction. It would appear that some of those could turn into a safety concern. Or, and then but we'd be better off just having a gravel road that can be maintained until there's a good base. But we didn't do that on the Roxbury Road. We didn't turn it back into a gravel road. We went ahead and fixed it. Yeah, we had the money and yeah. found a way, and it was definitely the worst road at that point in time. Okay. That's right. You yeah. know, so um, I, I say we use our money wisely. I know there's cracking on the Roxbury Road now, but I still think we've got a good road there. We'll not jump to conclusions there, mm -hmm. but um, I, that's, you know, but we all know how expensive that was, too. Mm -hmm. About 2.4 million. Yeah, 2.2, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but you, you have a handle on which one of the, these oiled roads that are that don't have a base. I mean, you have knowledge of all yes, of that. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're and seeing so it on Nighthawk right now. Um, you know, Nighthawk, <coughs> that's kind of moving into priority, like she's showing 330th east of uh, Tampa there. That, has a lot of traffic, don't get me wrong. I'm just looking at high, higher volume of traffic and what I try to move in my priority list. Um, so right now, yeah, that's why we have that estimated engineer's quote of 7.1 million for that stretch. So. For which stretch? You that night hall. That night hall. Yeah. So um, on this right, you said they are doing the chip and snow right now on it. They'll be hitting at the end of this week, beginning of next. And I mean, I can, we can try to patch them up a little bit one more time before we go over it. Um, I'll see what we can do there. But I mean, is, is the chip and seal going to help at all, or just be better off just blade patching what's there? Well, I mean, like I said, we'll either get some hand patch or blade patch over that. Now, throughout it, all these roads, there's a lot of cracks everywhere, oh, right. line cracks, and that's what's good is for chip seal, is right. to seal Getting all those cracks. Like I said, if there is a good part of stretch of road in there, it is good to try to keep that as good as possible for as long as we can. Um, that's why I'm trying to do the chip seal. So. Mm. I know that's a lot of miles yeah. to cover, and chip seal can be expensive yeah. to just do it. We have 44 miles this year, yes. Yeah. That's a lot of money wasted if it's just going to break up real quick. Yeah. And that's been the frustrating thing for me this year, is knowing that this was going to happen. So I don't know. Uh, is there anybody that we could contact or anything that could give us some some ideas or something? Norm Bowers or anybody? I'm just I just come to my mind. Anyway. I mean, I put. I mean, if those spots like that, I mean, I put chip seal off for a while again, and I go to uh, blade patching again. I mean, dig, digging them out. And, putting rock in there um, and like I said I I have not even been down south with blade patching yet or or uh, west either of the county if you go back to a gravel road you still have to put in those rock spots dig them out with a backhoe and all that no no not gravel I mean we'll be, if we go back to gravel we, we rebuild the base right there and there yeah so you get yeah. away from digging those holes and correct yeah out. The swag work is just on asphalt yeah. jobs. I just want to know going forward if we shouldn't 
look at these blacktop roofs that, you know, we know they're not going to hold long and we spend a lot of money on them. Is it better for the public? Is it safer for the public? Is it more cost effective to go back to gravel and build a base and then work towards something in the future? Or I don't know that anybody's going to be happy about this. No. Going back to gravel. No, no I, I understand and, that. I wouldn't want to, but, no. but you know, it's then it starts becoming a safety issue. And well, yeah. I think on this one right here, my, I guess my question is, knowing this is happening, and, and putting chip and seal on top of it is expensive mm -hmm. for all their miles. Is that wise to do that right now? I'm just asking you a question. No, no. like I said, it's going to blow out immediately. So maybe going uh, continuing with just the blade patch would be wise for now. Do we have a better idea? Or well, yeah, I, 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 but I just want to show you. I want to show you another one. Then you know the 13 mile road. Yep. Have you been down that one? Yep. And of course, you've seen that too. Yep. And what's your um, solution for that? When we did that overlay last year, not the overlay, um, uh, that recycle, we, sur we sur resurfaced it, recycling. Um, one spot. This is the spot on that 13 mile road. Actually, yeah, I know there's some places we will do. And it's, it's the last three miles of it. Is, is, major uh, deal, uh, county line going north. Um, we discovered like three springs when we were in that stretch on those last few miles. Uh, one of them was so bad, it was just like a water faucet. We water, it's like we created, created a, we ignited the spring and it was just running water constantly like water out of the faucet. Um, we drained, we were draining it for a day to finally slowed down a little bit and then we were about five foot deep on one stretch of the road by the county line and we put a whole bunch of rock, packed her down and uh, and that spot has not failed where that spring was running. There was a couple more, um, that's, we, we got a base issue under under some of that is, is what we going on. I know we had found two or three springs on the last stretch on that 13 mile road. Uh, indigo. Um, that's and like I said, I've, I've said it before. Um, I think this these dry seasons can affect us just as much as uh, rainy seasons too. Um, we're seeing a lot of damage to these roads, and we have you know. I know how much my house moves when we don't get rain either. You know, ground just, moves a lot more when it's dry. It's just so everything's just blowing up. So what was the process that you're going to do up here on 330th from Highway 15 to Limestone? Uh, you, that was a crack seal. That was a crack seal? Yes. So I'm just wondering, on you saying on this road right here on, on 330th, going out to 77 and the Rock, I'm sorry, not the Rock Spring Road, Rock Springs and things like that, you said there were some good areas on there, mm -hmm. but there are some cracks. Mm -hmm. Is it cheaper just to fill those good areas in right now, seal them areas? and continue with the blade patch to we That is the other option. I mean, I could skip right over them and, and pick up where I feel it's decent again, you know, and then come back at a later time and, and try to fix them, you know, patch them up again uh, instead of wasting the material right over that spot. You know, that's an option. I just stop shooting oil out when we get to it and then pick right back up where we're, where we're going. Is yeah. that cheaper? Is that a cheaper process? I'll go further with other roads that may need it, you know. Um, okay, so by, by filling in the cracks, is that cheaper than doing the chip and seal? Uh, the is chip and seal is, is covering the whole road with oil and material, so it it does the same purpose of uh, cracks. I mean, we're sealing up any kind of small crack. I mean, when you get down here, you're going to find littler cracks and airline mm -hmm. stuff. And, yeah. And, I think those are important where it hasn't started swagging out yet. Um, get those those covered up so rain don't get down in there and uh, keep going. Like I said, we could stop here, go right over top of it and continue on and leave a bad blown out spot for right now. We're going to get a lot of cold. Yeah, I don't think that's wise. I'm um, just saying that's, yeah. Um, well, you, you certainly, before you chip and seal, you would fix this, right? 
Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all these well, all these bed spots that have popped up over the last, you would actually go in and cut them out and, and redo them and fix yeah, them. Yeah, I was going to try to just patch them, but I mean, uh, yeah, I'll put a, I, if that's, yeah, if that's the way we're going to go, I'm going to just call off trips till then, because I don't, we, yeah, we got, I'm not going to, that's the problem, that road, I'm not going to fix anything. It's, that base is shot in that road, so. Are, are, we well, are we thinking straight, Jesse? Yeah, it's fine. We'll figure something out. I just don't know how to get to the rest of the county if I go back to Blake Patch and up north again. I just don't know what to do. We got too many asphalt roads in this county, and we cannot keep up with even the simple maintenance. Well, could you just direct the blade patch where you need to and have hand patch I work on some of that? Or is that impossible? To no, do? the hand patch is going right now because it doesn't take an oil to strip it or right. to shoot. Right. Um, I have to put chip seal to the stop because we only have one distributor, and it takes different oil for blade patch than it does for chip seal. Right. So I have to put something to the stop, a stop and then... And, uh, so you're, you won't be doing any blade patching when you're chip sealing? Correct. Okay. I can't. I don't, I don't, have I don't think we want to slow that. You, you got equipment I do, I do but then trying to, where am I going to find the, the roller, the yeah. extra rollers, the extra, yeah. you know, all the main I don't think we want to slow you down on the blade patch, I mean on the chip seal. Well. Because you got that in your plan. I mean, maybe on this stretch, but I mean, you've got, you've I got, got another 40 miles to well, do besides that. What is that? Four mile? No, this is by far from from Limestone all the way out to Highway 77. Well, oh, the, all the way to 77. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not. Areas. I'm not yeah. chip sealing going. I'm not chip sealing going west of, of Tampa this year. Oh, okay. I'm just doing that five mile stretch from Limestone to Coil Creek going east of Tampa, and then I'm going south of Tampa on the South Tampa Road. Okay. Now wait. You're only going how far? You're going from, from Limestone, Limestone going east to Quail Creek to Ramona. Yeah, that's four miles. Okay. Well, what about, that, what about that mile then from 77 to the Morris Line? That gets chip sealed, doesn't it? That was in the plan. I did. We are already done. We're past that. Oh, that's already been chip sealed? Yeah, we chip sealed that Friday. Okay, Friday. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're going to say. We're see it all the way through Lost Springs already this morning. We're on the Lost Springs Road now, 340th, so... Okay. So in essence, we're just talking about this four miles, five miles. Right now, yeah, I'm just, you know, like I said, once we get closer, I can just put chip still as a halt for about a week and jump over to Blade Patch real quick, get those patched up again, and see what we can do, and then get back to chip sealing. Is that going to throw you off? Fire? Not really. I mean, I just got to have temperatures. I just got to right, have right temperatures, yeah. and I think we'll be all right. I mean. You gotta have 60 degrees and rising right. which when you chip still. I think it's still okay. And then, and then, the best thing is to have 20 to 30 days of curing of 60 degrees and rising after you lay it out. So I'm just, I mean, I can take a week off the of chip still and try to get some more patched up here. Okay. See if we can make something last a little longer than a week. That'd be great. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Next is Bud. Well, I got in contact with Brad after our last meeting about the plan of operation. It needs to be approved. And he said he has read it and it's it's good. Fine. So good. Okay. What I need you guys to do, just approve it, and then I send the minutes off to the... Do they have to sign it? No. Okay. They just have to, has to be recorded in the minutes that they do approve it. have that copy? I don't know. Okay. 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 Okay, so this is going to be the salt waste management plan for five years? <coughs> right. Okay. This, this is good till next year, and then we have to redo the five year plan next year. But that's, this is the last year of this one. Will we approve it annually? Yes. Okay, it so. Has to be approved annually, so. Then I'll go ahead and make a motion to go ahead and approve the salt waste management plan. Uh, for this, do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent, all those say aye. 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 
Yeah. Then I got a very interesting letter the other day. Oh yeah? Yeah. Here's the envelope that came in. <laughs> Not just me, huh? Yeah. Huh. I have a lot of 80 acres south of Lehigh. Okay. Going <laughs> down to the county, yeah. And I don't know which one that person's talking about. They didn't give me their name or nothing, so I can... So you're not allowed to cut it and bail it? That's the diesel? Well, as long as it's not blooming, but at this time of the year, you shouldn't be. Because it's starting to bloom now, so... Mm -hmm. But still, <laughs> it would have been <laughs> nice to know exactly <laughs> where. Yeah. I mean, I'm well, not going to go out and try to drive around south of Lehigh and <laughs> find 80 acres of Cerisa that's been bailed, you know. Top 13, probably. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, other than that, that's all I had. Unless okay. you guys have something I don't for me. Anything else? No? Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep. Planning and zoning. Is Emma here today? She said she didn't have anything. She called this morning and said she didn't need to come over. So. Oh, okay. So then I guess Mr. Jantz is up, our county counselor. <laughs> Thank you. So isn't coming? She Nobody can if uh, she needs to. Okay. She th I think that she was just um, stuff that you had. Yeah. yeah. She did. She indeed had one item that um, it is a standardized type of charter ordinance. It's used in a number of counties in the area. Uh, and that's the one that I thought she might be here for. It's fine if she's not. I've kind of communicated with them via um, email. And this, this uh, candidly, it's formed up like every other one in every other county. And it's a charter that basically exempts us from the annual sanitary inspections, school buildings, and the grounds by the county health officer. I'd like to not have to do that. Um, it's a, a standard charter resolution in our case follows the same process that the charter ordinance does. If I said ordinance before, that's because that's just the force of habit. Um, 60 days, uh, two publications, 60 days for a protest period for someone to go ahead and file a petition. 61st day, it becomes law. In as much as this is something that is not necessarily uniformly um, uh, imposed on all counties, we have the ability to charter out if we so choose. Uh, that's been the request uh, through both uh, uh, Emma as well as, as Deidre. So I know I sent it via email this morning because I was without my system over the weekend. They were redoing the whole thing. So I sent it first thing this morning. Um, and if you would like to wait and do it at the next meeting to have a chance to read through that more carefully, that's fine. Um, but that's in essence what it's for. And I'd recommend passage of it given what they want to do. Yeah, okay. I got you. I got yeah, three emails. I think she's going to get us a number. Oh, just, uh, since it's a charter, I think it needs to have a number. I think that's correct. Yeah, it's a separate listing. So, I have that in my... Yeah, okay, it looks like it will be charter um, resolution number 12. Number 12. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to accept Charter Resolution Number 12. It's a Charter Resolution exempt in Marion County, Kansas, from certain provisions of KSA 65-201, specifically a portion of KSA 65-202, regarding annual sanitary inspections of school buildings and grounds by the county health officer. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ken. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And so uh, we sign this one, or are we going to do a stick to sign this one? We can, or I can go ahead. And I hadn't inserted the dates of the passage, and I didn't know what the charter number was. We'd like to have that all done in printed form. I'm happy to do that and send it over to you. It. it really doesn't, but it just okay. depends on how picky we want to be about that. Um, probably, it, since they just made the motion, I kind of prefer it when they make the motion, if they go ahead and sign it, if they're okay, okay with that. I am. We can add in. We'll fill in the rest of it. Yes. That's not a problem. Okay. That way it's done and we don't have to remember to come back. Mm -hmm.
do is run through a list is kind of adding up. Um, and then I'll follow this up probably in the memorandum form so that everyone has kind of a written version of what I'm going over here uh, in terms of kind of the checklist of items that are outstanding or that we're working on in various ways and what's going on with them. Uh, you'll recall there's a resolution that it needs to come before you regarding the amendment of the bylaws for the Planning Commission to do the 3, 3, and 3. Um, I have to check in with them a little bit on these staggered terms to make sure that the, as we implement that, how that's going to, in practice, actually work in order to make sure that the three from each of the, the three jurisdictional areas get implemented correctly. May we talk about that a little bit because sure. I have a bunch more information to give you on that. Okay, so. absolutely. I just wanted to make sure it's, yes. it's on the list okay. and, uh, and we probably want to, we'll want to do that. Um, I also have prepared both a, a memorandum of understanding as well as an interlocal agreement after speaking with Courtney about that video redaction software. Um, and I, uh, I assumed it would be done one way in talking to the AG's office, it may be another. Um, they, they were very interested in how that's going to be owned. My understanding is it's really going to be treated as owned by the county. The other participating jurisdictions in terms of the municipalities that are imposing or putting money into it and imposing some of their own protocols on things um, will impact it, but they're more concerned, the AG's office in terms of an interlocal is more concerned about will there be shared ownership or not. She was double checking that and mm -hmm. sent me an email, so once I have that from her, all of these I'm kind of planning for our next meeting because I will be here for the whole thing. And then if we have a slot in there, Tina, probably more than 20 minutes, I suspect, for a lot of this stuff. Uh, we talked about the... Uh, Did you say more than or not more than? More than. Okay. Yeah. I take up too much time. But probably going to have to happen the next time. So next week? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, the regional solid waste plan we've already discussed when Bud was here, and that's been approved after I've reviewed that. Jesse has some things that he thought he had sent everything on, but it only sent me a portion of on a vacation. Some other resolutions that he wants me to take a look at for him that will probably come before you ultimately as well. Um, then we did that charter. Um, Workforce agreement uh, that was sent to me last week for review. I reviewed that and, and approved that. So that workforce area one, they haven't done anything with that. Okay, and that I went through that um, after Cherry sent that over, and I'm fine with that based on. Is it a, um, are you guys? Do you remember um, that? I think it was Deb Schneider that came a few weeks back and talked about that workforce area. Shall I send it out to you again so you can look at it before yeah. you approve it? Got a lot of it. Okay, that's it. I'll send it to you in the form. Um, the uh, tech support bids that's still hanging. Uh, at some point, we either need to reject all except whatever it is that you choose to want to do. And I don't know if you want to do that without a full commission today or, or how you want to handle that. It's just something we probably need to get to. It's kind of languished for a few weeks, and so at some point, we need to take action on that. So, um, just mentioning it. Um, there's an eviction after tax sale on a Lehigh property. I've already ordered the limited on that, um, and I'm going to go ahead and proceed to do that. Apparently, we have someone living in a property that we now own, and that's got to be addressed. Um, I'll get that taken care of. I have those uh, road work policies in the alternative. I have the second one as well. I did go ahead and do some research and worked with some input from others uh, regarding approaches. We talked about that, you know, as they come on to one of our roadways. Um, we can set that up so we, where we allow property owners some discretion for at least 20 feet from their private property connecting to that so it doesn't get to be something they have to come in every time they want to put some rock down or that sort of thing and be an, an issue. So I've included that in those, uh, but since I didn't have them in front of you earlier than today, I thought I would put those on next week as well okay. for you to review and if there's input or questions, we can take that up at that time. Um, I need a little clarification on that. We talked about the Morris County, Marion County agreement on 340th on that chip seal, um, whether we wanted to simply rescind that agreement or amend it um, or do nothing. For future, but, you mean? Yeah, right, in the future. Um, so that's something, that's the, the governing body's decision, but which way we want to go on that impacts obviously how I rewrite that for review. So um, that's something that uh, at some point to hear from you folks on. Um, the other items are, are things we have not heard back from several other people on, so 
That's kind of my current list. Quite a list. Yeah, I'm sure it'll get longer before it gets shorter. But yeah. I just thought there were a number of those we'd probably take up next week. Some of them can be finished. There's a few things I just have to chase down. I need to talk to Tina about. I need to talk to Courtney about. Um, and so I didn't put any of the others on here for action today or ask that they be placed. So, so that's what I have. Okay. That's all that you have? <laughs> so far. So can we go back to the NCCEC mm -hmm. group now? Mm -hmm. um, I was at their last board meeting. I don't usually go, but I did go. Actually, I went to the last two. Um, and I'm, I'm very concerned about what's happening and in protection of county. And so I want to bring some things to your attention. Um, what I'm seeing here, and you can certainly tell me how wrong I am, but what I, I'm seeing here is I'm thinking that this is almost becoming a quasi-public corporation because they're proposing now to hire a director. Okay, And I don't know if you're aware or not, but of course, two of the stakeholders have pulled out. Mm -hmm. uh, Marion has pulled out, they publicly stated that, and I know Hillsborough has not included them in their 2019 budget. Okay. So now they're working on a lot less money. Um, also, their, ch their current chairman uh, came and gave a presentation here a couple weeks ago, budget time, and he made a comment that it's basically a county thing now. Well, at the last um, meeting that I attended just last <laughs> week, in their proposal to hire this person, they're, they're going to and they've been talking to Tina, I believe, and he stated to me about having that employee be somehow funneled through the county. And, uh, and I know there's ways to do that. Um, what, what I have found is really the only way we can do that is if we call them our employee. Yeah. And so I am not willing to do that without you Perfect. all saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that's what I was going to question you on because I'm nervous about that because, yeah, we would be responsible for everything. Uh, unemployment, work and comp so, and, and then her salary actually is going to, with all the benefits that we're paying, it go, it blows everything that we originally were presented to. Because Tina got a hold of me about that, and I did some phone calling and checking on it, and yes, what she's saying is consistent with what we've already discussed, only way that's going to work. And that's, and that's basically what I told them. I, I didn't tell them that we would do it. I just said, I can check and see if it's legal, but it's not my decision whether we do it or not, sure. regardless. And so. the, Caper sent me a checklist in terms of how they'll evaluate when they send it through their legal counsel, whether they would accept, uh, you know, Caper's qualification, for example. And it's a fairly, uh, you, you would expect, it's a predictable list. Mm -hmm. And some representations that Tina would have to make, only way that she's going to be able to do that, or I would be comfortable with her doing that, it's going to require that formal action, and really it's an employee. Um, so we just have to ultimately make the decision if that's really, in fact, what's going to occur. I don't see any way around that. But see now, having if we do that, so then what you have, if I'm not wrong, is you have a county employee, and we have no oversight. Exactly. And so we have, no, so that really puts the county in a precarious position. Because you have that independent board, where you have mm -hmm. uh, someone directing without your being expressly the ones directing that, or even having other than a representative element to it, but not a majority representation. Right. Um, you're sitting in a position where you can't direct, but you're providing the benefit. And paying the consequence. Should yeah. the board go broke, I agree. or whatever, then Still we have that liability. Yeah. We have liability, and, yeah. and more than just that, it, yeah. it, it accelerates. Yeah. Yeah. Exponentially. So <laughs> yes, there's, there's a number of ways that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, again, there are ways to do this, but what's contemplated so far and what was kind of presented I don't see it from the county's perspective working out terribly well without some revision. Um, and then that's going to involve some discussion about, okay, how does that work for everybody and how happy will everyone be mm -hmm. about changing that over? Because it really, for all intents and purposes, it kind of starts to roll downhill pretty rapidly toward it's just a county function. Because mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to exercise quite a bit of supervision and control. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, just your opinion what I said. Mm -hmm. oh, and I will also say, I did ask because I do already have an employee, uh, Catherine Young, mm -hmm. and she is being paid. And I asked myself, because they, their concern was about the, you know, paying of taxes and so on. And I, I questioned them, and they said, well, yeah, they already have the facilities and they already do take taxes out of her check and all that type of stuff. So if they can do it with her, they can surely do it with yeah. this lady. With the new person, sure. And if we do proceed that direction, I would ask, if we stick with just bylaws to govern this, 
would we not want to make sure we put a really extensive clause of exclusion mm -hmm. in there? Yeah, it, it would have to be rewritten pretty extensively. If it, again, it's going to be on fall on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. If it's not a county employee, and we're not going to go ahead and exert what would amount to primary control, and you're going to leave that in the hands of an independent board, then yes, I want they would read very differently mm -hmm. from the county's perspective. We're a participant. It's going to look a lot more, for example, like um, the party counties. Uh, the, their uh, their EDC, for example. They come in and make presentations to each and every entity within the uh, the county that's participant in the whole thing, and, um, and all that the different entities do is they funnel money, and they do have a certain level of representation in it. But it's completely independent in terms of the board. There's a, a bright line uh, liability and consequence kind of line that's drawn um, when we deal with those uh, versus shifting to the other side of the extreme one that you know tip it to that side of the continuum where we would be the ones basically saying, we being the commission, um, what they do, how they do it, and directing a significant amount. You could have it, they become more like an advisory board. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing that I guess somebody has to determine, what should this look like? And then that, that'll answer a lot of that, but to answer your direct question, yes, there's going to be a change in how those bylaws are going. Okay. So Kent, um, I don't know if you were aware of all of this. But based on what you just heard and what he said, and I will also add, I happen to know that they have already made a phone call to this lady. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that we cannot wait on. Mm -hmm. um, so I personally think that we need to make it clear at this time that we will not have her as a county employee. And then they can go forward doing it however they wish, would be my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I agree. That's, well, I, I agree with that because, I mean, this was formed as an autonomous mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. with participants. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way I see it. Mm -hmm. So would you be willing to make that motion or you want me to do it? I really would make that action, yeah. right? Yeah. I would, just so we have something in the minutes indicating that that was your desire to maintain that autonomy mm -hmm. and that it, you're not necessarily envisioning any of these as county employees. Mm -hmm. That clears it up for us in terms of any approach that they come to us with. And you know, they, they're, again, they're not without alternatives at that point. No, Certainly, there's ways to not. do it. Sure. It's just going to change how they approach it. Right, and you leave us of a lot of. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, sure. I'll go ahead and make the motion then to go ahead and reject the offer by, I guess that's how I say it, from MCCEDC to uh, have their director be a county employee. But that that any employees that they hire should remain solely under their control. Did, did they actually ask us for that or mm -hmm. they just ask for information in regards to how? I don't think they've made any kind of official. Have they brought anything to you? No. Office? They haven't oh, brought okay. it. Oh, okay. I thought maybe they, I thought they were No, no. They, haven't brought, sorry. they haven't brought it here yet, but they have told me that that's what they're wanting to do and they have made the offer to this lady. For of employment. Yes. You could even do this by consensus, just so we yeah. have something. And we can send a letter or something. Yeah. Or okay. Confirming something, that. Some yeah. sort of a communication to them stating that what their high yeah. vision is. Yeah. yeah. If they haven't come before you with a formal proposal that you're responding to, then I think consensus yeah, is more than enough. Okay. Okay. Yes. Good. That's fine. I saw in my email that they're wanting to come next on the agenda, but as I glance through. And they did tell me at the meeting that they were going to, and then they also did tell me that they had spoke to you, and so that's why, and then knowing that they made, I didn't know what the time yeah. was to make sure that we knew it before it gets, mm -hmm. that's good, you know, so, okay. All right, then I'm satisfied with that if you're all on the same page. Thank you, Mr. James, for that. Mm -hmm, sure. Yeah, I was worried about that. Yeah, that's one that really just needs to be clear so everybody's operating on the same plane. Anything that that, uh, that wasn't dealt with today that I just mentioned, we'll either um, plan on some type of action or at least an update. If some of it doesn't require action, just needs to be aware of it. Some of it does. So. Okay. so some of the things that you listed on there might take quite a bit of time. Yeah, I, I 
would say that's probably the fair statement. I would think so. Do you all have uh, availability on the 29th if we need to meet with the pay plan consultants are, are wanting to come back and meet with all of you? If so, um, they can't come on the payday meeting, so I didn't know if, if you have availability on the 29th to come at some point. That's a Wednesday. Or they may try to come in September at one of your other meetings. But on the 29th. That's a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm available on the 29th. Yeah. Okay. I'll get back with you. I should be talking with them today. So, okay. So, I wanted to ask um, a question. I was just kind of thinking about this and see how this might work or if it can work. <clears throat> our meetings, especially at the end of the month when we do the payday day. So we all normally have meetings every Monday, mm -hmm. but then on the last month week we have it on whatever day is the last of the month. It gets kind of confusing. So how much trouble would it be to be consistent on our meetings every month on Monday? I'm sorry, every week have a Monday meeting. And then just on payday have just payday activities, come sign the check, do what we need to do with the commission. Make it over to the public as well. But just have just that do payday, payday and nothing just else. Just do payday and not have like a regular meeting on that. That way, because I know like on Tuesday, Mr. Yeah. Jones is busy on Tuesdays. And so it does get confusing a lot of times for a lot of people call on like, oh, no, we don't have a meeting this day. It's actually on Wednesday. I mean, would it be so okay if you have to a, do? If you have a, okay, so what you're saying is if the end of the month is on a Tuesday, you're going to meet Monday and Tuesday. Well, we'll meet on Monday. We'll have our commission meeting. And then just the commission would come in and just take care of nothing but payday activities. It would just be a real quick thing. I mean, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, as a commissioner, I wouldn't mind doing that. It would alleviate the, you know, the confusion, and and plus we could get more business done by having more just of a full meeting. I'm just asking. Would it be a good work. idea to maybe have all three of you here to make sure that you can all work it out with your schedule? Well, I, I'm fine with that. Yes, but I'm just saying. I think, I think it would be something right. to consider as long as we. Keep, as long as we don't try to adjust our payday to one of those Mondays. No, I'm not asking. You I'm not asking say. that. I know what payday. I know how you do. payday is payday. Mm -hmm. But you know, just to have a regular meeting with all the payday, because I know on payday, when we had the regular meeting, we sit here for however long, just going through signing stuff that is boring to the public. You know what I'm saying? And so sometimes they sit here for 20 minutes. Sometimes they sit here for an hour and a half, just watching us shuffle papers. And then also uh, in doing so. Um, I know this last uh, payday activities, we had a very full schedule. It was a very full schedule. And then at lunchtime, we went over to uh, the Kiwanis, the team was doing a demonstration on the new voting machines, and we came back and had budget. And then I wanted to rush quick over to Hillsboro because of their meetings, find out if MCCEDC was going to be in there, whatever. So I didn't take the time to look at the um, mileage reports because it just didn't big big. Okay, so if we do that separately, then I would have all the time in the world to sit here and look at the, the mileage statements sure. and stuff. Because I really feel like I don't have the time to adequately, because I don't want to hold people up while I'm sitting here looking at it. It's mileage. And they're not the confidential information anyway, but, um, but um, I just think it would work better for the public. Do you want to bring that up again um, next month? Sure. When it next year? Sure. And then that way, Mr. Jantz could be more often, huh? Yeah, like many of these, I'll pick um, at least two to three of the four or five each month where I just completely keep it clear, like next week. Sure. This one I couldn't avoid, and then they were going late uh, all morning. But sure. um, it's just good if I, I kind of get with Tina, see which meetings is best we can tell mm -hmm. are going to be the best for me to be here for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then, but at least try to also make it, like I've said before, available. So every one of them I'm here for some portion of it mm -hmm. as needed, but uh, some of it's good to be here for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. fact, a lot of the time it's good to be here for the whole thing. Now we had something, I didn't recall you saying it on your list about policies, getting policies more uniform, remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was we also going to address that next week mm -hmm. or is that still kind of working? Uh, still kind of working. I did not have that on the list for next week, but I do have it on my list. Okay. Um, and there's several of those kinds of things um, at the bottom that some of them I'm waiting on uh, additional information. From several sources, and then that one is just a more comprehensive review. So. Okay. Okay.
So do you have anything else? I do not. You do not? Do you have anything else, Tina? I don't think so. Does anybody from the public have anything at this time they'd like to bring to the Commission? Not at this time. Not at this time? <laughs> okay. Kent, do you have anything further? No. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.